So the important thing to remember is that if you're an educator and you have an educator email is that you can get a Canva Pro account for free, which allows you to upload your own templates, your own projects to save all of those. You can get a brand kit and all of those things. So the first thing that we're gonna look at is Google Classroom headers. So when we come to Canva, we'll go to our search bar and we will just type that in. You'll see that it'll kind of jump in right there. So when we click on Google Classroom header, it's gonna pull up hundreds, if not thousands of Google Classroom headers. And the beautiful thing about Canva is that they have already been pre-measured to the exact measurements of the Google Classroom header. The beautiful thing also is they have a blank template that you can just add whatever you want. I prefer, because I'm not a designer and I'm not as creative as I would like to be, is I usually find a template that I like and then insert different text or my own images, uh, maybe my own picture here. So if we jump over here to this one, uh, we won't spend time to actually edit and go through this. I can actually upload my picture and drop my picture in there. I can change the text. I can change the color. So this is a really easy way to create a Google Classroom header using Canva. So that's number one. Let's jump on to number two. So the second one is um, more of like classroom decor. So maybe you have posters throughout your room that you want to remind kids of different rules or expectations, positive consequences, negative consequences. Um, I know in our state, we have to have our consequences listed in the room of what those look like. Uh, for our evaluation, our teacher evaluations. So when you type in classroom decor kits, you're gonna get a lot of different items. You can see here that we've got classroom rules here. We can have a poster here. We also have some alphabet things. We can do posters for back to school. And again, there's just a lot of designs when I type in classroom decor kits. Um, there's about 724 of them. There's hall passes, bathroom pass that you can cut those out. You can see if we scroll through here, uh, on these passes, there's a library pass and also a nurse pass. So you could have those in your room, you could have them laminated. And so when students leave the classroom, you could use those. So that is classroom decor kits. Number three is lesson plans. Um, there are a lot of different versions of lesson plans. We have the five day week, we have the seven day week where you could add other things. We'll talk about planners in a few, um, one of those suggestions. But with all of the templates in Canva, you also have a blank template. Again, you can start from something else. And this is a weekly lesson plan that you could laminate. You could actually create it in a poster. You can write things on it and then erase it with a dry erase marker. There's a lot of different options that you have with lesson plans using Canvas free templates. Here's one that has the Saturday. There's the objectives for the week, activities and notes. And again, each one of these templates is customizable, changeable, the text, the images, the color. Again, just really quick to show you, when I click here, I have that mustard color, I can go to a light blue, and, and you can actually set up your entire room to have the same sort of decor and design across all of your posters and images and handouts and different things like that. Okay, let's jump on to number four. Number four would be worksheets. Um, and now I'm not a huge fan of worksheets, even though it, it's funny because I work in a digital virtual school now. Uh, we do do a lot of things online, I just said doo-doo. Um, with, with the templates for worksheets, is these are actually organized by a hundred other different types of things or categories. So you'll notice that I typed in Easter worksheet. It's Easter this next week. And so we could have some, obviously some of these are for the younger grades, right? Different worksheets that we could produce for our students. Now, if I change this instead of Easter, let's just throw in math, math worksheet, it will bring up a thousand templates, right? So there's a lot of different templates that you have. There's cutouts, there's ones that are a little bit more hands-on. You can see the six-sided die where you can print this out for students, cut them up and the students fold it and actually make a die out of it with different colors. Um, there's thousands of these worksheets. Again, I'll just search again, spelling worksheet. You'll notice that it'll pull in words roll a sight word. I mean, these are a lot of things that people have created and just uploaded for free to Canva that you have access to. So I'm not gonna go through all the possible worksheets because there's thousands and thousands and tens and thousands of them, but let's jump on to Canva template for educators number five. Okay, number five, certificates. So when I click on certificates, I'm searching for this. We have a ton of different kind of certificates and these have all different ranges. Um, what I would say, 
you know, elementary, middle, and high school ranges. You have some that look a little bit more professional. You could use these for professional development for your teachers. Maybe there's a PD that you go to or that you're sharing or that you're the host for or the presenter. You could give these out to your um, audience. And there's a, a lot of cool ways using Google that you can actually send these out automatically. Um, so again, there are hundreds, let's see how many, 6,000 templates here for certificates for educators to create and share with students. Again, you can do these in color, you can do these in black and white, and you always have the option to create a blank certificate um, or a blank template from there. Now, when I click on this template, I just wanna show you again is that the measurements are already here. So if we wanted to change this um, measurement, we could do this in the template itself. And we do that by going to resize. And right now it's at 11 and a half, 11 by eight and a half. You could do four to a page. And again, you can also do that with your printer is just print four to a page, but you could resize these. So they were the size of a postcard, which is our next template. And that's number six. So when I search for postcards, you're going to get a lot of non-educational postcards and a lot of, you know, just random postcards. I'm a huge fan of postcards. Uh, so I've been sending out postcards all 12 years of my education career, both as a teacher, as an administrator and an assistant principal. It's something that as a principal, I wanted to implement into our school. Um, and so we send out every student in our school, every teacher sends every student a postcard. We pay for the stamp, we pay for the postage, um, and we pre-stamp all of those. And you could order them outside and have a generic school postcard for your entire school or you could have a classroom postcard. It's something that has a little bit more of your flavor and your appeal to that, but that would be something that you could create. Um, let's find one that looks a little bit like, uh, maybe it's a birthday postcard that you send out to students on their birthday. When you click on the postcard templates, it's actually gonna have a front and a back, or it should, some of them do. I picked the wrong one that doesn't. Let's see here. I knew this was going to happen. Let's see. Okay. When you hover over it. So if I'm looking for a postcard that has a front and a back, which would be, you know, maybe a picture or the message on the front and then a place on the back where I could write on that. And then where you put the stamp and then the return address. When you ho hover over these postcard options, you'll see that it says one of two, two of two. So I, as I hold this here, great example is this one down here. I have an image on the front and then I have this part where I can put the return address on that. So I'll make it a little bit bigger so you can see here. So this is the return address. We can throw the stamp up here and then we have this image on the front page. Now, obviously you would wanna change this. I mean, a really cool idea just off of the top of my head is to have a picture of your classroom and you could have it be your city, your state, your classroom, your school. Um, that would be something that would be really cool to send home to kids. So. That was number six, uh, maybe number seven. I'm losing count at this point. Um, number, we're gonna shrink up some of these windows. I had a bunch of windows open or tabs. So let's say bookmarks. We're big fans of reading in my house as an English teacher. I love books. We have them all over our house. When we type in bookmark templates, you can see we get 2,309 of them and there's all sorts of them. We have some that are interactive, cool activity. Kids print this out, they color their own. And the beautiful thing about Canva, right, is you can actually share this with your students. So you could create a template and students could create their own bookmark or you could have the students design their own from scratch. Um, as you all know, hopefully if you're educators, the students are becoming more tech savvy and they can actually create their own stuff in Canva in the classroom. And so when we jump into bookmarks, you'll notice that on some of the categories, we have sub filters. So we could do cute and we'll get 700 of those. There's some again that we could color in, little pop art here, a lot of different bookmarks. And when we go to print them, you'll see that it's measured out in bookmark size. We could print five to a page or six to a page, whatever the bookmark length is so that we could fit those all on an eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock or paper. Number eight on the list of Canva templates that every teacher should be using. When I click on class schedules, you're gonna get a lot of different ideas. Now, what a class schedule looks like and how it works in your class is a little bit different. Obviously, a lot of these are geared towards elementary, but even in the middle school and the high school, we have students that work great uh, or work better with accommodations or graphic organizers or visual representations of what is happening in the classroom. These are great for students that have IEPs or 504s 
or students that are struggling staying organized in their own way. It's also something that you can share out with parents. These are digital, so they can type in them, they can print them, or you can print them out blank. Students can write down their own schedule so they get in the habit of thinking about things, working tactically, right, or working with the pencil and writing things down. For some students, that actually makes things a little bit more difficult, and so we would just wanna print these off and give, this, give these templates to them. Again, I'm not gonna go through all of them. We always have a blank template. Some of these are month long, some of these are week long, some of those are daily schedules with the times on the left. You can see there's a lot of different ideas here for class schedules. Now, the one that you already saw, this is number nine now, is, oh, uh, that's not what I wanted. It was, project scheduling planners. So when you're working with the older grades uh, or even the younger grades and you have a long-term project, whether it's a science fair or a book report or different things like that, is you have the opportunity to share these templates with students so that they can create their own plan. And I really like this one. We'll jump over here and look at this. Or they move backwards, right? So backward design through their project. So we're giving students a create your own school project, which is a project I did as a teacher. They had three or four weeks to accomplish it in a group. This is something that we could give to the students. They could create their own timeline for this project, everything that needs to be done week one, week two, week three, week four, week five. Um, a lot of different ways that these can be used. Um, number 10 on our list for Canva templates that you should be using in your class graphic organizers so when i search for graphic it'll just pull this up it's right there it's got its own list these are all templated default 8 uh, 11 by eight and a half you can see that right here right here is where i'm looking at you can see the size so when i click on graphic organizers we're going to get thousands of them we're also going to get some styles here simple minimalist illustration so there's a lot of different ways to use graphic organizers in the classroom, whether they're organizing a writing project, a creative project, whether we're having them um, organize things on a timeline, um, whether we're having them grab the main idea, characterization, different things. And so I'm not gonna spend time going through all of these. You can see down here, compare and contrast. We have the plot mountain. Uh, some of these, I'm just, it's bringing back memories of the classroom. Um, so that's another way that you can engage students in your classroom using Canva templates. And again, these can be shared digitally, so you don't have to print them all out if you're thinking about the amount of paper that this is going to take. Students can have these if you're in a one-to-one -one situation or even a two-to-one situation, they can be editing these in their own Canva account. Number 11 is presentations. So when we click on presentations, this would be either a PowerPoint or a Google Sheet. Uh, and there's thousands available online. There's a ton of teachers that have put together a ton of free resources everywhere. This is just another resource to add to your list. And we have 5,000 templates here for presentations. And you'll notice all of them come kind of in a 10, 9, 10 slide um, format. The thing that I love about these is that they're pre-made. I don't have to spend all of the time with the creative side of things. I can go in and change the content and not stress about the design. Now, I'm not taking away from the teachers that love to design. For me, I'm a minimalist and I like to spend a lot of time doing the things that I know are, are gonna have an impact on the kids. When I was in middle school, design was great, but it was more about the content than the design of the PowerPoint or the presentation or the Prezi or whatever we were doing. And so as we click in on these, just again to show you, you'll see that these templates are created with different page settings or page templates. So this is the title page. And if we go down, um, we can see other pages. We can make the same page. Let's see if I can get to the next page. See, I knew it was gonna do that because I'm here. Let me go back. Um, let's hover, hover over this one. So these are the templates as I'm sliding through. I'll zoom up in here like this. So you can see the different pages where they have quotes, there's pictures, there's images. And these are just a little bit more fun. And for the kids, they jump in and spend a little bit of time on design. I know sometimes that can be distracting for the students, but again, there are thousands of templates. Number 12, Canvas template that every teacher should be using, social media posts. So every teacher should be sharing either with their school, their individual classroom, their social media posts. Now, which social media platform you use, it doesn't matter to me. 
Canva has everything from Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, and all of those templates are here. Um, they also have animated ones. So when I click on social media, it's going to have hundreds, hundreds again, thousands, hundreds of thousands here of templates that we can share out with our social media accounts, whether that's Facebook, Twitter, whatever. And again, you'll see these are subbed here. Now, if you wanna dial in onto an individual social media platform, you would just type in the platform and what this will pull up is this will pull up the correct format for Instagram, right? Which is a 1080 by 1080. There's 300,000 plus templates here that you can go through and look at. Again, you'll notice here that this had the pro button on it because I have a pro account, I have access to this. Teachers again, get free access as, of, as, as far as I'm aware right now to the Canva pro account when you sign up using a teacher email. There's a link below, you can go and click on that or you just go to Canva and sign up as an educator. Uh, super easy to do. Again, if we go back here, you can also do Facebook. Um, Facebook posts and it'll have these formatted the way that they should be. Obviously not as many as Instagram. It's a little bit different sizing. Now that Instagram and Facebook post together, most people just post to Instagram and have that secondary uh, button clicked where it just posts to Facebook automatically. And you can go both ways with that. Okay, number 12 on our list of must have templates for teachers is our social media headers. When I say social media headers, I mean our Twitter account, our Facebook account, uh, maybe we have a Bitmoji account. Um, we can actually change the headers of all of those. So when I type in Twitter header, this is more for teachers than the actual students. But all of these Twitter headers are formatted and sized the way that they need to be. So again, if I jump back over to Facebook header, You'll see these are here. Uh, there's also Instagram. Uh, what's it called? Instagram, Instagram grid, where the grid is already divided up to you for the post. And so you can have these. I know Instagram doesn't have a header. It's just your picture. I apologize for that. Um, there's grids. There are literally millions of templates on Canva. These are just 13 of the ones that I feel as an educator that would make an impact tomorrow in your classroom. Most likely, if you're here, it's because you're an educator. If you're not, you're more than welcome to be here, but a lot of this is geared towards educators. I hope this video saved you time, effort, and frustration. I love you, I appreciate you, and I'm glad that you're here.